In a rather shocking turn of events, prosecutors who have been relentlessly pursuing Sean Diddy Combs have now shifted their focus to a new target, New York City Mayor Eric Adams. And guess what? The same U.S. Attorney's Office that's been coming for Diddy is now all over Adams, stirring up even more drama in New York City's already buzzing political scene. While the case against Adams is currently sealed, all the critical information will be revealed when it's unwrapped on Thursday, but there's definitely room to wonder if there's some kind of direct link between these two powerful men. Let's not pretend there isn't a possible connection between Adams and Diddy, because the idea that these two cases are entirely separate? We're not completely buying that just yet. The history between the two goes beyond just casual political run-ins. Remember when Diddy was handed the key to New York City by Adams after the mayor's successful campaign? That wasn't just a symbolic gesture, it was a full-on bromance moment. Diddy, the king of New York's music scene, got the ultimate respect from Adams, the man running the city. They were all smiles and photo ops back then, and their bond was hard to ignore. But fast forward to now, and things aren't looking so friendly. Diddy had to return that same key to the city after being charged, stripping him of that once glorified status. And now Adams finds himself under the microscope with the same Southern District of New York breathing down his neck. It makes you wonder, could their legal troubles be connected in some deeper way? While there's no concrete evidence yet, the fact that they're both tangled up with the same prosecutors raises a lot of eyebrows. We're not ruling out a direct link between the cases, because in this city, nothing's off the table. Here's what we do know about Adams' situation so far. He's been indicted on federal criminal charges which makes him the first sitting mayor of New York City to face this kind of legal heat while in office. That alone is groundbreaking, but it gets even wilder when you look at what these charges could be related to. Sources are pointing to allegations that the Turkish government might have funneled illegal money into Adams' mayoral campaign. Yeah, we're talking about foreign cash possibly being used to influence one of the most powerful positions in New York. If true, this is the kind of scandal that could flip the city's political scene upside down. Adams, however, is not staying quiet. He's already come out swinging, telling the New York Post, I always knew that if I stood my ground for New Yorkers, I would be a target, and a target I became. If I am charged, I am innocent, and I will fight this with every ounce of my strength and spirit. He's painting this whole thing as a political attack, claiming that his leadership style has made him a target for those looking to bring him down. It's clear that Adams isn't going to let this go without a fight, and he's ready to battle it out in court. But let's not forget, this isn't the first time rumors about Adams and shady campaign money have popped up. Months ago, whispers started spreading about foreign influence creeping into his campaign finances, particularly from Turkey. While nothing was confirmed back then, the feds clearly think there's something worth investigating now. If these allegations are true, Adams could be in deep trouble for accepting illegal foreign contributions, a massive no-no in U.S. politics. What makes this whole situation even more intriguing is the fact that the Southern District of New York, the same legal force coming for Diddy, is also leading the charge against Adams. You have to wonder if they're digging into a wider web of corruption involving multiple high-profile figures in the city. Could there be a deeper link between Diddy's charges and Adams' current legal woes? It's impossible to say for sure right now, but we're definitely not ruling out the possibility that these two cases are connected in some way. After all, the timing is just too perfect to ignore. Let's rewind a bit to Adams and Diddy's once strong bond. When Diddy was given the key to New York City, it felt like a moment of mutual respect, a recognition of Diddy's influence and status in the city. But after Diddy's recent legal battles and having to return that key, it raises questions about the current state of their relationship. Adams and Diddy have navigated the complicated waters of politics and entertainment together, but now both are facing serious challenges that could change the course of their legacies. As Adams gears up for his legal fight, the pressure is mounting. He's not just defending his reputation, he's fighting to keep his political career intact. The idea that a sitting mayor could be embroiled in a scandal involving international money is wild enough, but if these charges stick, it could rock New York City politics to its core. The ramifications could ripple through the city, affecting not just Adams, but also the broader political landscape. Adams is making it clear that he won't go down without a fight. He's already claimed innocence, but as we await the unsealing of the charges, the public is left to speculate. What exactly is he being accused of? And how deep does this rabbit hole go? With so many questions lingering, every political analyst and legal expert in New York City is glued to their screens, ready for the next update.
As the days tick down to the unveiling of the charges against Adams, the city is alive with theories, debates, and plenty of chatter. His defenders are rallying around him, while his critics are sharpening their knives. If it turns out that Adams has been involved in something as serious as foreign campaign financing, his political career could be over. And if Diddy's case somehow intertwines with Adams' legal battles, it would only amplify the stakes for both men. This situation is evolving rapidly, and as we approach the moment of truth, one thing is clear. New York City is about to witness one of the biggest political dramas in recent history. The intertwining fates of Mayor Eric Adams and Sean Diddy Combs present a captivating narrative that has everyone on the edge of their seats. The relationship that once showcased a powerful alliance is now mired in potential scandal, and as both men prepare to face their respective battles, the outcome remains uncertain. So while we wait for the charges against Adams to be unsealed, the buzz around the city continues to grow. Are we on the brink of uncovering a massive political scandal that could change everything? Or is this just another chapter in the always complicated story of New York City politics? Whatever happens, happens, you can bet that this drama is far from over. Something you have to pay attention to here is what did not happen in the Epstein case or the Maxwell case. In the indictment, the definition of sex trafficking is mentioned. That did not happen with Epstein and with Maxwell. The second I saw that in the indictment, they're mentioning force, fraud, coercion, which is the definition of human trafficking, I knew this time this guy's going to fry. He's going to. This is a sex trafficking case. The reason they did that is so no corrupt district attorney could plead this down to a misdemeanor, a drug charge, kidnapping charge, rape charge. This is a sex trafficking case. Maxwell wasn't tried in a sex trafficking case. This is very, very different, David. They're stacking up. They went slow. Remember, they raided him and then everybody said they're going to do nothing. And I said, no, they're walking it slow because they've got the evidence. I believe this canary bird is going to sing. Here's what I believe is going to happen. The, the charges are mounting up and he's going to get 30, 50, 55, 60 years is what he's looking at. And I believe they're going to throw the book at him. I also believe they're going to talk to him about ceasing assets. They're going to talk to him about your children are going to left destitute on the street. We're going to take you for everything you've got because it is New York City. In New York City, tax crimes are looked at differently. They're looking at tax evasion. They're going to throw the book at this guy, I believe, to make him a deal. And I believe the deal they're going to make him is, now you need to spill the beans. You need to talk and we'll give you 15 with probation or whatever, right? Some sort of a condition. I really believe this is going to happen. Other names are going to come out. Sean will talk. That's why Jay-Z is running. That's why Jay-Z is nervous. Jaguar is talking about it. So many, so many other artists at the moment. The industry is squirming because they know Sean is loose-lipped. He will talk. I, I, I can share this with you. An executive from his organization ends up in my office, in my office, unannounced, in my office saying, will you help me? I'm not part of it. I, I, I run some of his brands. This guy's got tequila brands. He's got a, a, a ton of stuff. One of his executives ends up in my office. I said, how did you get in my office? He said, I'm here. You've got to help me. I said, no, we're going to come after you. You know, you've been there. You've worked with him for 17 years. You know, they, they're all, they're wow. jumping. David, so brazen that he shows up at my office to say, will you help me? I'm not, I want to talk. I want to spill the beans. So this is going to crumble. Now you're going to see Hollywood film industry implicated, Wall Street implicated, professional sports implicated. Remember, allegedly, I'll say allegedly, because they make us, right? Miners did attend these parties. Miners. That charge has not been brought yet. If that charge comes, now you're looking at life. Life, because the sex trafficking charges for minors are very different. You do not have to prove forced fraud or coercion with a minor. A minor's a victim. The defense is going to say it's not forced fraud, coercion. The woman did it at their own remission, at their own will. He told them, I'll give you a record deal. You're going to be my girlfriend. He defrauded them. He coerced them with record deals. He put them in the studio. He made them believe they were going to be stars. He is toast. He's fried because it's actually a sex trafficking case. And I believe, especially being denied bail, remember, he pays off his mortgage, $18 million a week before he turns himself in. He was so confident. His lawyers are so cavalier that the, the judge would take the bail. Judge, he has an $18 million home, $50 million cash. He could put an ankle bracelet on me. I'm not going nowhere. And they go, no bail, no bail. Because this guy is 
over his eyeballs in water when he realizes this and his lawyers tell him, Sean, there's no way out, buddy. Take the deal. He'll ask for a deal. And that deal has to be names. And then those names can't just be a list of names. They have to be indicted and they've got to go in front of a court and they've got to be cross-examined. They've got to sit in front of a jury. And can, can we have that a public trial that they, like they make Kyle Rittenhouse a public trial? Can we have a Please. public trial? Yeah, right? Can we bring him in at the public seat like Amber Heard and Johnny Depp? Turn the cameras on. Yes. Let's see. Yeah, that's exactly what I think every American needs to see. There's such this, uh, such this allure about Hollywood and all the athletes and celebrities and their party life, and it's so dark. It's so dark. And now to find out that there's been this systematic system of sex slavery, uh, sex workers being drugged. Uh, we, we hear, I hear this as well. Maybe you can confirm, Yako. Allegedly, the Kardashians are mixed up in this, that there's some documents, uh, there's some proof, evidence, that people were being drugged, and then things were being recorded, videotaped, and then that was used against executives or individuals to get further in, in their deals. What can you what can you shed uh, on that topic? Yeah, the, the, the names, and, and, and what you're gonna find here, it's the same circle. It's the Epstein circle, it's the, it's the Harvey Weinstein circle. Remember, they run in packs. Football players hang with football players. Ba baseball players with baseball players. The industry run in packs. 15 years of freak out parties. Who do you think went through there? Everybody. Th they went through there. Now, does it mean they're all complicit in trafficking? No, but they saw stuff and they talk about it and they know, and they know what happens at midnight. They know what happens at midnight. Yeah. At midnight, certain things happen. Girls get naked. All of a sudden, everybody's naked. All of a sudden, they find out, oh, have I been kissing on a man or, or a tranny? Is this a dude or a girl? All, by, all being recorded. At midnight. And, so, and now, now, one thing that cannot happen, that we cannot skim over, is the record label executives. Remember, Sean was led into the industry by a particular record label executive. We're not gonna mention his name right now, but biggest of the biggest. Godfather of American music. Made him, right? Funded the freak out parties as a mechanism to gather talent, bring them in. Bring them into our house. Let them not go to another label, a competitive label. Bring them in here, compromise them, wine and dine them, promise them, put them in the studio the morning after. Here's what happens. A girl comes in that has hopes and dreams that has slept in her car all of a sudden, she's with Puff Daddy. 